Ben Shalom, how are you doing? You good? Very well. Very well. Thank you for inviting TalkSport down to uh, this this lunch. How has uh, 2023 been for Boxer? How, how do you feel? Listen, it's, it's definitely been a building year. We've had to make a lot of decisions that that our company and boxing will benefit off in the next year or two and invest mainly in developing talent. We've still done the biggest two British shows in the UK with Eubank Smith 1 and 2 and uh, had some amazing successful stories with Chris Bill and Smith winning the world title in the stadium and Bawatsi coming over was a massive achievement for us. Adam Azim's rise and Caroline Dubois' rise and seeing Ben Whitaker come on and Vidal Riley all emerging as stars. So it's been a it's been an unbelievable year in that sense in terms of watching the stable develop and now getting to the point where everyone's having their big fights, everyone's entering contention, everyone's got a huge 2024 ahead. And um, yeah, as a young promoter, without the mature stable of five, ten years, sometimes you have to you have to think ahead and you have to plan ahead and you have to make decisions that will benefit you in the long term. And um, yeah, we've had a fantastic year, done a huge amount of shows seen a huge amount of talent develop and, and ready and it's even the local stories like Tyler Denny and Chris Bill and Smith and what they've done in their local towns and um, yeah there's been some amazing memories and also some 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 periods where we've had to as I say think about this year coming and uh, that's why I'm so excited for 2024. Talking about 2024, um, you mentioned a few of your stable there. Caroline Dubois, she's made huge strides this year. Um, obviously, we start 2024 with Natasha Jonas, Michaela, Ma uh, Michaela Meyer. How do you feel ahead of that huge fight? Look, women's boxing since I came along has just even gone even further through the roof. I remember when we headlined with Savannah in Newcastle and people were like, are you sure? I remember people thinking, are you sure? I remember the reaction wasn't great. And that just shows how far women's boxing has come. We then subsequently had the All Women's Night, one of the most viewed events ever on Sky Sports and around the world. And uh, since then, it's been building blocks. We signed Caroline Dubois, Caris Hartingstall, Lauren Price. For me, the, through, the three future stars of British boxing in the women's division and what Natasha Jonas has done obviously won a fourth world title this year which is which is just unbelievable from where she came from she now gets the legacy fights that she wants Michaela Mayer was the fight both of them are huge stars in their own right both in the UK and the US and uh, yeah really really happy for Natasha because she's achieved so much sometimes all that left is those those big nights in front of your home fans the first time she'll headline in Liverpool and she gets to do it against someone like Michaela Mayer it's a special fight and it's another big, big, great fight for, for women's boxing. I think just staying with women's boxing, you've been very integral in building it. Um, obviously, we had Marshall, Shields, we had Marshall, Cruz, uh, Deshern. What is the, what's next for women's boxing? They've been talking about longer rounds. Do you think that's feasible? Or do you think women's boxing can grow in a different way? I think women should have the right to fight for three minutes. And I think they can fight for three minutes. And I think they're athletes and they're able to fight for three minutes. I think it, the question comes down to what do they want to do? What does the sport want them to do? And I, the rise of women's boxing is in no small part down to the action and the entertainment and the, and the, and the big fights that are being made. And that comes sometimes down to, I believe, the, the two minute rounds because there's nowhere to hide. There's no boxing at distance. There's no taking your time. There's no slowing down a fight. So I think the balance has to be there. You know, we still don't have the depth in men's boxing that we have in women's boxing. And we have to be realistic. And that means that the products we need to take care with, and we have so far, and that's why we've seen such a huge growth in the sport. And so, of course, I believe women's uh, athletes and, and, and boxers should be able to fight three minute rounds, but it has to come, sometimes it comes down to entertainment. And Mayor Jonas on January 20th, might be more entertaining over two minute rounds so yeah that's my take on it we'll see there's going to be plenty more developments similarly savannah marshall clarissa shields rematch i'd much prefer it three minute rounds i think that's where we're going to see savannah come out of a shell i think that's where we're going to see a much more even fight particularly at super middleweight so i hope that we'll have the flexibility that the men's sport doesn't have 
where where it can be two minutes or where it can be three minutes, depending on what the fans want and depending on what the fighters want. No, I agree. I think there's definitely room there. Um, sticking with the start of next year, Boazzi Aziz, February 3rd. Obviously, it was unfortunate it got cancelled first time round. Um, how much are you looking forward to getting that on? Oh, it's been a long time coming. That was the worst one. We had so many fights that were cancelled last year and for that to be cancelled on fight week was horrible. Never saw it come in and obviously got the call on the Monday night. But to get it back on this early, Joshua Bawazi came over with a lot of expectation. Wants the big fights, wants to be active. So it was gutted for him as well. But we now get to see it. And the disappointment that was shown in British boxing and the major sports, you know, sports fans as well, just shows how big a fight that was. It's a huge fight. It's one of the biggest fights that you can make in British box, boxing. For any boxing fan, it's, it's the one to look forward to. I think we talk about Eubank Smith being the top two British events, uh, boxing events on British soil this year. For me, Bawatsi Aziz would have been the third. And so we get to see it. I can't wait. Dan Aziz, obviously, people know that we've had a long history together. So to see him headlining now from where we were is, is incredible. And to do it with Joshua Bawatsi, who, in my opinion, is possibly the most talented light heavyweight in this country. Is a, it's going to be a special event between two guys who have everything on the line for the world title eliminator and the right to fight for a world title. So, yeah, can't wait for that. Um, and obviously, February 3rd, that's locked in. There's been suggestions. Um, Eddie Hearn has been looking at that for Conor Ben, Chris Eubank. Obviously, there's been doubts within the media, in the books and world, if that fight can actually happen. Ben's still not been cleared. What do you make of that, Ben? Look, they've tried to schedule that fight many times. Um, so... We'll focus on what we're doing. Good luck to them if they can get it scheduled. Obviously, I think people know my opinions and that fighters should be licensed. But if they can make the fight, fine. But as I say, it's been it's been scheduled many times, that fight. What I'm looking forward to is Boazzi Aziz on February the 3rd. And it's a huge card. And Adam Azim will defend his world title on that card. Caroline Dubois will be, in there, be on there. I believe Florian Marco will be on there. Bidal Riley on my right it's in a big fight on February the 3rd so it's um, it's going to be a huge night on February the 3rd for British boxing and uh, yeah uh, I, do, I can't talk on anyone else's business but I believe that that will be the fight that everyone's looking forward to on February the 3rd Good year for Boxer. Um, what do you rate 2023 for boxing as a sport? Obviously, we've seen Saudi become a lot more prominent in the sport. How do you think boxing's developed over the last year? I think it's been really good. I think it's been a great year. I think we've seen Saudi influence the sport and bring promoters together in, on certain occasions. I think the heavyweight division has been stagnant. We know that, but the rest of the divisions have been great. All I hope is with these big site fees and big opportunities that we don't see fighters waiting and hoping that their moment or their golden pot at the end of the rainbow will come because that slows down the whole sport has done for the past couple of years. So that's all you're going to hope for. I want to see the big fights in this country. I want to see the big British fights happening and you don't want the sport to slow down. That's, that's the only wish, but I think it's been a fantastic year and uh, a lot of the big fights have been made and uh, PBC and Top Rank have had great years in the States as well. So. Yeah, really good, yeah. Just mentioning, just to finish, Ben, you, you speak about, you know, the heavyweight division's gone stagnant. Um, you talk about promoters working with each other. You've worked with Frank before, uh, Parker, Joyce. Frank and Eddie are working together on this huge Saudi fight. Sort of two questions in one. Do you think that fight, these fights would have happened if they didn't work together? And what do you make of those two working together? I think... The credit needs to go down to his, his excellency in Saudi, obviously putting up a huge amount of money to make it make sense for everyone. That's the reality of the situation. Hopefully it can continue, hopefully it continues regularly, but hopefully it doesn't stop other fights happening because of it. And so, um, yeah, it's great, but I think money talks, let's be honest, and uh, it's good. And it, I'm glad that um, they've chosen this sport. And, and for December 23rd, it produces a great card. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see it more often.